our current moment in history, you'll see groups of individuals that are more powerful than other groups because of the number of people in their network. The more powerful group will literally dominate and promote their ideologies while the submissive classes are trying to overcome this tension, this inequality of power and influence and try to push to change the current system that we all are living in, the current balance of power. If you weren't aware, you can make a difference. The system is always being changed, tweaked and modified. Individual impact isn't a fairy tale. However, alienated or submissive groups make more of an impact if they come together and demand radical change where it is due. Back to the text. Butler is trying to get us to understand the formation of the I, the individual. And as I said before, she thinks that the I is greatly affected by the prevailing powerful groups that promote certain belief systems, certain ideologies, and ways of existing. That's because the powerful groups tend to control mass media outlets. They tend to control guns and weapons and the means of production to maintain their power. And no matter who we are, we all have opinions on how one should live their life. And <laughs> we all think that we're correct and everyone else is wrong. We're always voicing our opinions how one should live their life, even if others don't agree with us. Some people promote their opinions and it becomes the majority's opinion because those groups of people had so much power. John Stuart Mill calls this the tyranny of the majority. Mill asserted whatever the majority tended to believe is what shapes contemporary norms. Anyone who disagrees or disagreed had to either appropriate the norms or face social ostracism. Imagine your current belief systems right now, such as all women have the right to vote and all schools should be open to everyone regardless of their ethnicity and now imagine being transported in time ah, we're being transported now we're surrounded by a majority of people who do not believe in your belief system so what do you do now do you voice your opinions your beliefs or do you conform to the current norms because you're afraid of facing grief or persecution the point is whatever norms are currently in place we all need to deal with them we need to decide if we agree with them take them on or if we're against them and if we do disagree with them if we are against them the current norms the current laws the current normative framework that really impacts people's lives do we hide away in our houses do we not speak because we're afraid of facing social ostracism for our views? Or do we go out in public and openly speak our reason? Do we let others hear our voice through articulating our reason over and over again until our reason gets more and more articulate, more and more true, that it becomes so clear and so true that others cannot help but agree with us? Now returning back to the text, we need to give an account to produce a narration for our particular selves, for our particular subjective experience and reason on how we see the world. If we choose to change the world in the direction towards justice, virtue, reason, equality, we need to start practicing critical thinking and articulating our reason or arguments and luckily we do this all the time <laughs> even if we're not aware or conscious of it we tell stories to our friends and family members when they ask how our day was or what's up we go into our past experiences um, past lessons that we were taught by our teachers and try to narrate them into a coherent story and argument to justify why we acted that way or why our reason is the way that it is. 
We especially do this when our parents used to demand why we were out so late. Why were you out so late? So we quickly narrate our experience and try to offer a reason to justify our actions. Butler helps us see the particular narrations we try to recreate or try to articulate through recognizable language. I narrate what I think happened while my best friend could retell the same story that we experienced together in a completely different way which would arrive at a completely different form of the truth. Butler shows us how trying to give an account of ourselves of the interaction we come to experience are very obscure and not always truthful. It is hard to recreate or narrate the truth. That's why it's whenever a couple breaks up and we're friends with both of them, no matter who you are, we'll find it very confusing to determine whose side is more justified or true, or who to side with if we're taking sides. Stay tuned for part number two of Give an Account of Oneself by Judith Butler. And as always, enjoy.